Three very simple questions. What do I need to stop doing? What do I need to start doing? And what do I need to keep doing? If people lead themselves well, I'm convinced that they will develop safer practices at work. If you need to know what to do, you just need to Google it. The thing that causes us the, the most pains aren't a lack of knowledge. It's, it's a lack of motivation. Welcome to the Electrical Safety Podcast. I'm your host, John Travis. Today, I got a very special guest, uh, Mark Muscroft. Mark, thanks for coming on the show. And absolutely my pleasure. Great. I mean, uh, yeah, so just kind of so everybody listening understands maybe why you're here. Mm. Um, we've been, our company's been working with Mark and his team uh, for a while now, just helping with leadership and personal growth. And this is something that, you know, I've been thinking a lot about lately and how it applies to safety and, you know, just a, I guess, just a quick story. So we, we did a, an incident review, uh, for a company a while ago. And, um, I read through the, the, the personal account of the person who was in the incident. He ended up in an arc flash. He was burned quite badly. And he had five mistakes that he made. Hmm. And I can't remember what the five mistakes were, but every mistake he said something like, yeah, I knew I shouldn't have did that, but, oh, I should have went, you know, I should have went and talked to this guy, however, decided not to. And, you know, it got me thinking, it got me kind of thinking down this path where he actually knew all the safety rules. Hmm. He knew everything he needed to do, and he still chose not to. And then that gets me thinking about safety culture, and then, you know, going back to this, the work that we've done with you and and some of your courses on leadership and and how that stuff all meshes together. Mm. So that's why I asked Mark to come on the show today. Mm. And um, there there is a strong connection between like that that example of a story. And um, I'll kind of put it this way: I love there's three questions that probably my favorite three questions that we talk about in a in a growth class or in a, in a leadership environment is like. Um, when it comes to individually, personally, like, and the th very, three very simple questions is, what do I need to stop doing? What do I need to start doing? And what do I need to keep doing? And of course, we're talking from kind of a personal growth point of view, but even take a look at our personal health or our mental health or emotional health. Um, we actually have those answers. We actually know the things that we need to stop doing. So it's the human condition. It's like, like, you know what? I know I need to stop eating chips at mm -hmm. nine o'clock at night, but we still keep doing it, knowing that it's not getting us to the desired, you know, the desired outcome or a preferred future. It's not taking us where we want to go, but we continually it's a kind of self sabotage, right? And that's just one example. Like I know that I need to put my sneakers on and go for a run. Like I need to start doing that. Like right. I know I need to start doing that, and so. There's things that I know that I need to start doing in all my different domains. Um, my emotional health. Like I I know that I need to get up early in the, earlier in the morning, take some time just for me for a half an hour first thing in the morning and sit down with a good book and, you know, read like that where when no one's up and, and no distractions, I know that that's something that I need to keep doing. Mm -hmm. Right? Because that's a habit I have going on right now. And, and I know that I need to keep doing that because that's given, that's given me the, the traction and, and I'm getting a payback for that. So I think with just those three questions, we can answer a lot of, uh, you know, personal leadership, you know, like we don't, I actually, uh, in the last uh, course that I just got done doing, the last thing I said to them, and then this goes against, you know, basically everything I kind of believe in a sense, but I, I told them, so I don't want you read a book for the next three months. You know, I don't want you don't read another growth book or personal or, and stop listening to podcasts. Mm -hmm. Like, and we're doing a podcast, yeah. so don't shut yours off. But um, like, don't listen to any more podcasts. Don't read a book. Just only think about something you need to start doing. Mm -hmm. Stop doing and keep doing. Just one thing out of those three categories. And for the next, you know, Two or three months, just commit to just doing those things. Things you already know that you need to you need to start doing. And so when you're talking about this incident report, and we're talking about electrical safety, 
I think you're absolutely right. Like these people that, that are taking training and like, they know probably, I, I don't, I don't have no expertise in electro training. I'm like, yeah. Full disclaimer. I'm assuming here. Okay. So this is, these are my opinions. So, but I would assume that in the, in that field, like they know what wires they can touch, what wires they can't touch or where they should drill holes or where they shouldn't drill holes or like, I would assume that they, they actually know these things. So the, the actual question is like, wh why do people still get, get hurt? Mm -hmm. Right. And I think it's, there, there, there's definitely, a, I think a connection between why I hurt myself by eating chips at nine o'clock at night. Like, why do I keep doing it to myself? Right. And because it's immediate, it's, it's, it's uh, basically that decision of choosing immediate over ultimate. Like, I ultimately value my health. But you know what? Immediately right now, it's convenient. Yeah. To sit down and have some chips. Yeah, that's exactly it. Right? So possibly in the electrical world, like, ultimately I value going home to my family. Ultimately, I value my health and not getting hurt. But you know what? It'd be so much quicker just to not bother checking to see if that if the power was shut off, or mm -hmm. it'd be it. You know what? I'd save some time, or you know, something is is causing us possibly to take shortcuts. Yeah. No, I mean that's a, I mean a lot of these incidents, and even people that we've had on the show before, their story. It's always like three thirty on a Friday afternoon. They've got one last thing to do, and. They know if they do it the right way, the safe way, they're going to be there till 8 p.m. Right. <clears throat> or they can just make this little shortcut and they'll be home for dinner. Right. Right. And then that's always famous last words kind of thing. That, ha But that happens in even if, like as you're talking there, like that happens even us physically. Like we, you know, everything is on the other side of effort. <clears throat> so... I'm just thinking about, you know, just that whole personal growth part that if, if, if people lead themselves well, I'm convinced that <clears throat> they will develop, you know, safer practices at, at work, just like, um, so when I talk to people here, so let's take personal health, for example, like physical fitness. Yeah. The, the the harsh reality is people don't need to hire a trainer. They actually don't need to even sign up at the local gym. Mm -hmm. The signing up at the gym and hiring a trainer, they're actually you're paying for motivation. You're not for paying for what do I need to do, right? Because if you let, let's be honest, if you if you if you need to know what to do, you just need to Google it. There's five thousand apps out there that you can follow on training you just need you just need to do it mm -hmm. right and i think electrical safety like if it would be the same deal like if you're, if you're not quite sure like should i touch this or not it's probably a pretty quick flip out pull out your phone you could probably google it if you weren't sure but i'm yeah right for the most part yeah so all i'm saying is like the the thing that causes us the, the most pains aren't aren't a lack of knowledge it's, it's a lack of motivation. It's the leading ourselves well. Um, and, and just doing the things that we know that we right already need. To know so let, let me ask you this, cause this is, this is exactly it. Like, and, and I would say most of the training right now in, <clears throat> in the electrical safety space, or even just in the safety space is very knowledge based. So it's like, here are the standards. Um, we're going to read through all these standards, which are extremely boring to read through. Right. And then we're going to test you on your knowledge of the standards. And to me, that doesn't really keep people safe because it is difficult to correlate that, you know, standard, which is written very, le you know, it sounds like, a, I would say it sounds like an engineer and a lawyer got together and just, yeah. you know, went to town. And, uh to take that and then put that into the workplace for a real person who's doing a real job those don't those are are often difficult to to correlate or to understand like okay what does that even mean what do i need to do and then um 
So that's most of the training, knowledge-based stuff. Where was I going with this? So the when, when you get out into the into the real world, like you mentioned about trying to get in shape. So it is bait. It's bait. It's like you, you I can tell you right now, I don't need to Google it. It's like go for a run every day for 20 minutes, do a bunch of push-ups and pull-ups right. and sit-ups, and you're probably good. Right. If you did that every day, you'd be, you'd be great. Right. Right. But people turn it into this thing that's like, they need this big workout plan and they need all this stuff and they, they just overcomplicate it and they just won't do the basics, right? right? And so what I find in the workplace is, let's imagine a manufacturing facility, they've got a management team, they've got a supervisor and that supervisor looks after 10 electrical workers. Right. What they think is, oh, I'm going to send those 10 electrical workers on a training course a safety training course for one day every three years. Duh. So we just talked, you know, we sat here and talked about that. Like it's, 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 it's layers of leadership maybe, but it's also up to those individuals to realize that, Hey, it's things that you need to do. Uh, but what I was going to ask you was if you were going to go into an organization like that and help them figure that out, like, you know, what's your thought process or where would you start and how would the conversations go? Um, one of the first questions I'd probably ask is, has anybody ever been hurt, hurt here at work or do you know someone who's been hurt at work? And um, the very next question would be, like, I would assume that everyone, they would probably all know someone mm -hmm. or maybe they're hurt themselves. Like, like, why did you get hurt? Like, was it because you didn't know? Like, I'd be very curious in your field to to know, like, like the statistics on, like, post interviews, um, asking the question was it was it a lack of knowledge? Like, why are people getting hurt? Mm -hmm. was, is it a lack of knowledge, or is it? Do you get answers like, I knew I shouldn't have touched that, but I did it. Like, I took a chance and I did it anyway. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, like that's that. Because that that therein the answers actually provide the 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 problem where the problem is, and I think we try to fix, you know, sometimes fix um, motivational problems with knowledge answer with knowledge solutions, mm -hmm. right? And why do we do that? That's that's a great question. It's it's uh, it's it's kind of neat. I have I own a I own a service center actually. I own a I own a a car dealership. And uh, yesterday, I was coming through the office, going to going to my office, and one of a, a good friend of mine, I coached his kid in basketball. He works for WorkSafe New Brunswick. He was here getting an oil change. So I stopped, said hi to him, his name is Scott. I said, Scott, I said, uh, you know, had some questions about our service center real back, about, mm -hmm. you know, just safety and things like that. And not to throw, not to throw them under the bus or anything, they're just doing their job. But basically I had some questions on like the hoist and, you know, like being safe and, and things like, he goes, he said, listen, Mark, like all I, all I want to know, all I care about is that you had a meeting and you told them and it's documented and they signed off on it. As long as I have, as long as there's a paper trail that this happened, then you're off the hook. And I remember I, I was just standing there. I'm like, but that doesn't mean they're safe. Mm. Like, I, I actually like the guys that work for me. Like, I, I want to make sure that they're safe. I'm not worried. <clears throat> I am worried about, you know, litigation and, and or yeah. getting in trouble or whatever you want to call it. Like, that's important too. But that's not the reason why I want my guys to be safe. And uh, and I, I actually called them out on it. And I said, but that doesn't mean my, that doesn't mean my guys are safe. He's like, well, as far as we're concerned, though, as long as the paperwork's in order and you can just, you know, prove that, you know, you met with them and you told them. I said, listen, I have four kids, right? Mm -hmm. I tell them stuff all the time. It doesn't mean it sunk in. It doesn't mean they do it. Hey, you can't drive your bike without a helmet, right? Then all of a sudden you look out the window and there they're going, like, mm -hmm. down the driveway, full-fledged without a helmet on. And, and it's, I think that kind of happens in organizations too, like especially from management, I'm I'm in this role. I'm I'm in a management position. It's like, well, I told them, and they signed off on it, right? So therefore, I did my job. But did we do our job really? Because as a parent, 
I, I, I give them the knowledge, but then when I see the actions, I open up the door, I yell at Eli, hey, Eli, you're not allowed on the bike until you put your helmet on, right? When I see the actions happening. And um, I'm not really sure if I'm answering your question, but I just, I saw this connect, I see this connection between safety, you know, here, safety at home, in that organization. And then it's, it's not that Eli doesn't know he shouldn't be wearing his helmet. Mm-hmm. The guys out back know what they need, need to do to be safe. Anytime an injury happens, like very seldom is it a f- freak. <clears throat> like we did everything kind of right, mm-hmm. you know. Well, there was something you said there that reminded me when we actually started first working with you and, you know, we kind of came hoping to improve our business or something. I can't really remember what the goal was. And we were, we were, I remember this initial conversation. We were like, oh, we have, you know, we have all these great processes. We have, you know, blah, 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 blah. But the conversation quickly went into like, well, what's your relationship with, with all the employees, with all the guys? Do they know that you care? Mm-hmm. You know, all of that stuff. And, and as I thought about this more and more, like if you look at a, at a business and they, and you know, you maybe you have sales as one pillar and operations is another one and finance is another one. You know, sa- safety is no different. It's just another another one of those pillars. Right. And so as we started to think through, or as I started to think through the, the leadership stuff, it's like if I want to improve any one of those pillars, it, like leadership has to be throughout them all. Mm-hmm. And, and that's really the only way to bring it, bring it up. Mm. Um, I mean, obviously, if your processes are no good, that's going to be a quick fix. But oftentimes, like these companies have... They have the safety procedures. They have the safety process. They have the safety manager. Yeah. You know, or the safety cop. It's as some yeah. places seem to. But um, yeah, like for those, remember I mentioned like the supervisor. Um, what's something that, you know, say you have that supervisor, he feels like he's really struggling with his team to help them improve safety or maybe they don't listen to him or whatever. Like what are some of the things you would you know, coach that guy? Well, then that's, that's uh that's an influence issue right and uh you know people don't care how much you know until until they know how much you care Mm -hmm. so a lot of times i think that you know i love this little i have this functional little you know scale that i that i use as kind of a as a tool whatever um and what happens is I think a lot in organizations and people and the personal lives and everything where, you know, if if you're leading yourself, like your ability to lead yourself is like a three out of 10. Like, you know, even how well you look after yourself, how, lo- how well you take care of yourself emotionally, mm-hmm. um, mentally, you know, if, if that's a three or mm-hmm. five out of 10, it's impossible to lead somebody else at a nine out of 10 level when you're leading yourself at a three out of 10 level, mm-hmm. just, it can't happen. Right. And so, um, I guess my, my take on that is that I, I really try and encourage people. And, and, and if it was a supervisor, I'd, I'd, I'd want to, to do, to work with them on like, Hey, how, how well are you leading you instead of leading the others? Mm-hmm. I, I want to know about them. When you go home at night, like your 16 year old son, like when you say something to him and you need, like how, how much traction do you get? Like, do they respect you? Do they, do they listen to you? Um, do they actually want to have a conversation with you? Yeah. Do they actually want to talk to you? Uh, because, and those are the hard, those are the hard conversations I have with people and they say, well, this has nothing to do with my work. Yeah. And I would argue it has everything to do with your work because that's the one, that's the relationship that matters the most. It matters more. And, and your relationship with yourself is the most important one. Like how, how much do you value yourself? It's very hard to, it's very hard to add value to yourself when you don't feel like you deserve it. Mm -hmm. Right. And what's, what's ironic is that even in the leadership courses, I find the people that sign up the most are the ones that don't need it the most. Mm -hmm. 
Well, that's actually kind of what I was thinking that because a lot of people that end up being an electrical supervisor before that were a really good electrician. Right. They weren't necessarily a great leader. Right. That's That happens everywhere. It happens right? in every so, organization. So the first thing, probably, they don't even realize that they're in a leadership role. Right. They think that they're in a, a supervisor or manager role or the boss or whatever. Right. And so even making that connection. Well, you touched on a very important point because that's how almost every organization grows. So as an organization grows, you take any, um, any industry, the car industry, um, you know, factories, mm -hmm. uh, you get an employee who's really, really good at what they do, <laughs> right? So sales, yeah, really good salesmen. Well, they're really, really good. So we get, we get five other salesmen on board. So now we have six salesmen. Oh, now we need a sales manager. So who do we pick to, to promote them is we pick the best one. Right? So now we're taking them out of something that they're really good at doing. And now we, we put them at sales manager. Now that that person likes the promotion, wants the promotion typically, feels good about themselves, but now they're in a leadership role. Mm -hmm. they're, it's completely different. It's a completely different animal. You're no longer selling, right? Now you're responsible to manage five other people and to help them become, you know, better salespeople and to, which is a completely different animal. And you're absolutely right. So this happens in every organization. So you take uh, most times supervisors, they were just really good at what they did. So they get promoted up the ranks and, and get into a supervisory position. So now maybe at a factory, they're responsible for 10 or 15 electricians, mm -hmm. right? But they don't, that's not even possibly something that they really enjoy doing. Um, and I've seen that happen, you know, it's, I've seen it happen all the time or it does happen all the yeah. time and, and it only makes sense, right? It's, well, who would you, who would you, who would you want to pick as a manager? Because you want, you want someone who's going to model it really well. So you, you pick your best, you put them, you move them up and you promote them and it becomes the, you know, the standard, right? Like that everybody's trying to like do what this person does, but they're no longer now doing what they're really good at. And, and they're trying to motivate and encourage others and might that might not even be their strength. So um, everything rises and falls in leadership. That's just a, that's just a fact. Mm -hmm. People can choose to believe it or not, but it's just a fact. Like, so you get these people in supervisory positions and even above them, um, these people in supervisory positions, like it, it doesn't matter if you're talking about health, it doesn't matter, like they, they need leadership conversations right and the better they lead themselves they'll raise their bar you know from a five to a six to a seven to an eight and when you get someone who's leading themselves really well like just leading themselves really well like they're they're looking after themselves physically they're eating properly yeah they're getting enough sleep they're volunteering in the community you know like they they are finding ways to just add value Wherever they go, whatever they're doing, they're adding value to people's lives, right? They become fantastic supervisors because they value because they just value people, mm -hmm. and they will make sure that the safety of their employees is number one. Yeah. So, I guess one question I do have on on the scale, um, just in general, like what what have you found when people come in and you know, it's a bit of a self-evaluation. I'm a, I'm a two, I'm a three. Maybe some of them think they're a nine mm. and they're actually a two. There's a big gap there. Um, you know, what is, what is it for you that you found working with people that, that kind of aha moment where they will go from not even realizing that they're in a leadership role to then, you know, getting to, you know, at least on the path that they're going to start to mm. grow. Like, is there one, you know, maybe it's a, you know, I'm thinking of a chapter out of the, out of the growth uh, book or, or something like, you know, what, what's kind of the most important thing for someone to get started? Yeah, that's a really good question because everyone comes with different, um, 
different backgrounds, different environments, um, personalities is huge, right? One of the best tools, if that's, if I can kind of reword it that way, is that, uh, so I, I really enjoy, um, teaching the disc profiling, right? And, and, uh, without getting into too much detail, what disc is, it's just another personality, you know, type yeah. of profiling. And it's, it's not about what people actually necessarily learn about themselves. Although that's, that's obviously why we do it. Mm -hmm. It's also very important. It's the, it's the awareness that comes from it. The, the awareness that, you know what, I, I see life through a certain set of lenses. Mm -hmm. So for example, like my personality, I'm a high I on this disc profile, that, which means it's very, I'm very relational. And my C part of my disc profile is actually below the midline, quite a bit below. So uh, I'm not process driven, um, organizational. I don't need procedures. In fact, I don't like procedures. I want to be spontaneous. Mm -hmm. I want I want to think on the spot. I want to think my feet. Um, whereas someone who's a high C uh, would be much more into, okay, show me, like, what exactly do you want me to do here? Mm -hmm. So my son, for example, who's 18 years old, uh, he's, he's a high C uh, on, on the disc profile. So if he went to work for, uh, you know, a factory or, or you know, mm -hmm. a job as an electrician, uh, he'd be the type of employee that'd be like, okay, what are all the rules here? Like, what are, you know, and, and basically follow it them. People like me are a little bit more at risk of getting electrocuted because uh, we tend to be a little bit more like uh, I'm higher risk too. Mm -hmm. So on on my disc profile, like I'm I'm really high risk. Um, my Matthias, my son, would be is very very low risk right. as a personality. So you'll take more risk. I'll take more risk. Right. Everything like but. That that involves like jumping out of a plane. That involves a whole bunch of things, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, but I, I I have way more experiences in life. I, people with my type of personality tend to do way more things mm -hmm. because there's very not very much that holds them back. Uh, also, we tend to fail a lot because we tried a lot of things, right? But as life goes on, we we develop uh, people with high risk develop a, a pretty big. A, a set of um, skills in a, in a lot of different areas. Mm -hmm. Not because we're good at anything, just because we're willing to try them. Whereas some with very low risk, you know, like, ooh, like right. what if I'm not going to do that? Like what if, you know, I hurt myself or what if, what if, you know? So these are the things that play into why people get hurt, even uh, on the work site, mm -hmm. on the workplace. Uh, you're, a person's risk tolerance has a huge, plays a, a huge role in, in accidents and in workplaces, not just electrical, just in general. Right. And it only makes sense. Right. So knowing your people and knowing your employees, uh, you know, going back to the knowledge part, like we can sign, get them to sign off on it and we can do a knowledge based course. And like, how often have you taught or you guys done a course where someone actually raised their hand and said, you know what? I never knew that touching that wire was, would be unsafe or like, I'm, I'm sure it's happened. You've come across a couple things where yeah, that's the whole purpose of doing it. Right. So I'm sure there's things that you've told them that they're like, oh, I didn't know that. Right. So obviously it's very important to take these arc flash courses yep. and to do these things. Yeah. I guess, uh, I, I, I also want to, would want to just include that possibly it's not a knowledge problem it's more so personality right yeah well, i think you said it like you know you start with self-awareness because you got to figure out how you see the world right and then if you if you were in a supervisor position then you, you kind of learn how each individual sees the world or as best as you can get right and now you're starting to understand those differences so you know okay billy's really gonna enjoy these procedures and read through them and sam over there is probably not even going to look at them right and so you learn how to deal with those different 
uh, different issues or different personalities. Right. But, uh, no, that's great. And I think, I think we're, we're probably pretty good on time. Um, just to kind of close things out, you know, if someone wanted to reach out to you and get in touch, uh, maybe talk about leadership or, or a leadership course, like where's the best place to find you? That's a good question. Uh, we could probably find me on, um, we're on Instagram. All right. Uh, just Mark Musgrove. I'll work predominantly in, as of right now, in like the Sussex, St. John, Fredericton, Moncton areas. Yeah. And, 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 uh, cause I, you know, I will do zoom meetings and I will, <laughs> of course, on online stuff, but 100% prefer in the room. Right. Um, so we actually built a, a classroom that'll house about 20 people or, or a space, I should say, cause it's not a classroom. I don't like to be called a teacher. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I much prefer just facil facilitating, um, but anyway, it's, uh, that's, we, we do them right in Sussex and, uh, but I, I have traveled and gone to, you know, to mm -hmm. cities and, and rented, you know, rent a, rent a space or, or right at the workspace too. Sometimes some of those places have a, a boardroom that we can just right. in-house do it. But I highly recommend like with supervisors and the leaders in the, in the organization start there mm. and because raising their lid on their ability to lead and to, and to actually communicate and influence others, it's going to be the biggest ROI on, on your, on, a, on the resources. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Thanks.